<laughs> Welcome everybody to Organize Your Printed Photos presented by um, Melissa Draving. Here I am, Melissa Draving. I'm a personal concierge, owner of Here For You Concierge, certified photo manager and a professional public speaker. And um, also presenting this event is the Mayus Public Library. And we have Laurie, the li librarian. Can you introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Laurie Miller, the adult services librarian at Emmaus Public Library. And uh, we always enjoy having Melissa's programs. Thank you. So this is a makeup session. We had an in we had a hybrid event, and um, after the fact, we found out that the um, audio was not so good. So we're doing this for those of you who joined us virtually but couldn't quite hear. So thank you, everyone who came out and participated on Zoom. So tonight we're going to talk about saving the memories and not the mess. That's a nice little quote. There have been great societies that did not use the wheel, but there have been no societies that did not tell stories. So here's my, my story in photos. Here we have um, my wedding, one of my wedding pictures where my husband carried me across the lawn, <laughs> which was so fun because um, my heels were sinking into the mud. And here's me and my best friends, um, Misty and Jacomina and little Carly who's grown up so fast. <laughs> and here's me and my grandmother down in Florida playing nice game of Scrabble. She's a Scrabble queen and uh, she loved playing every single night. <laughs> so we always had a good time. We would play a couple times every day when I was there and she loved it. So for your photos, um, so Laurie, since you're my participant, we're gonna pick on you. So um, your photos, what are they of? How many do you have? Where are they? Can you find a favorite? Uh, well, the photos that I have kind of straddle the gap between analog and digital. I have photos of myself and my family um, from the late seventies, early eighties on through that are on paper. And then, I don't know, starting in the early 2000s from the digital camera to the cell phone. So I, I kind of run the whole gamut with the types of photos that I have. Um, most of my print photos, uh, I believe are still actually in storage at my parents' house, <laughs> <laughs> which they've reminded me of a lot. Oh. <laughs> Um, projects coming <laughs> yeah, lots of there. projects and um my digital photos i have those stored to the cloud through um, google pictures mainly some are stored on my cell phone but i think those automatically get uploaded to the google cloud yeah that's great so um yeah exactly our generation we have kind of a unique challenge where like you said where we have some that are analog and some that are digital. So there's two, you know, two different um, types of mediums. You have to kind of combine them and, and find a, um, a way to have everything in one place, hopefully. And um, so hopefully they're not in your parents' attic or basement, right? Because <laughs> <laughs> we know that photos, um, you know, they're more susceptible to damage if they're stored in the attic and the basement. And and ideally you want them in the main level of the house. Um, photos like to be where we are. So that way they're a little bit more safe. Um, can you find a favorite? Uh, well, my favorite photos, there's a photo I have, it's a digital photo of my first son and our, our cat who's now passed on. And it's when he would just first came home from the hospital and she curled up on the pillow right near his head. And it was Aww. really sweet, yeah. That's so cute. Yeah, I also have some favorite photos of my dogs um, who I love. So now my photos, um, I'll answer these questions. I, I have a lot of photos of different stages in my life. Um, used to be very into taking uh, photos on disposable cameras because my friends like that. So I we would always get the disposable cameras and have so much fun taking pictures of each other, which was great. Um, how many do I have? I have 
already started scanning my photo collection and I have a post-it note here somewhere. I think I left off at 460 something of um, physical photos that I've scanned. And then uh, to add in the digital photos that I have. Um, right now, a lot of my photos are on uh, Google pictures as well, but I've just um, purchased permanent storage from Forever. So I think I have at least two, maybe 3000 photos. Um, altogether, so quite a few. But I'm starting to now, as I learn more about photo management, like go through and, and delete at all the, you know, blurry ones, the duplicates, try to, trying to preen down to, you know, um, have less and have, you know, the higher quality ones. And they, my photos are currently here in my office. I'm scanning a lot of them, but uh, I know that my dad has photos of me as a, a younger child, um, you know, before I was like, you know, taking my own pictures, he has several large underbed totes that are in his storage unit. So I told him he could bring them here, but he's, you know, a little apprehensive, I guess, about moving them. So they're in different locations. And my favorite photo, um, I have, oh, there's so many. <laughs> I love, um, some of the pictures that we took at my mom's wedding, uh, those are really special. And um, I have made them into a book recently and I, I showed it at the library. So there's one of me and my mom that I really love. So there is 1.7 trillion paper photos existing in the world currently. So that's quite a quite a bit of photos. <laughs> Everybody's got photos. We all have them in um, spades, I would have to say. So why organize your photos? Um, it'll be the best investment you'll ever make. So uh, personally, I you know started investing in, like I said, this permanent storage product. Um, and what I love about it is just being able to go onto my phone, onto their app, and just um, kind of like stroll down memory lane and look at the really cool things that have happened in my life. And I really like to look back and appreciate the people, you know, my ancestors, we'll, we'll call them my grandparents and great grandparents. And just, um, you know, like learning about their lives and all the struggles that they went through for me has um, really like given me a lot of strength. Like I can can really call call upon their experiences and feel like well if they had such a hard life and they went through so much and they came out with it and they you know still had a loving family and and had everything you know they could need then my struggles are probably very small in comparison like you know I'm not living on a frontier like some of my ancestors were I'm not an immigrant to this country like some of them were I don't have eight kids like my grandmother, <laughs> she had eight kids. And so um, for me, I just really like being able to connect with the past in that way and just have it, you know, at the tip of my fingers and also displayed on the wall. So that if I have like a down moment where I'm feeling really stressed, I can just look at, you know, my grandmothers and just think of how strong they were and, and just like call upon them for kind of like some resiliency. So here's the five steps to, um, you know, start your photo management project, your physical photo project. The so first step is to define a specific goal. And this is definitely the most important step because we just talked about 1.7 trillion photos. Um, and each of us here, we have photos in the thousands. So um, if we are trying to start a project, it's not, it doesn't make sense to try to do everything in the same project. Um, so defining a goal will help you break it up into smaller segments and will help you accomplish finishing the project rather than just, um, you know, starting it and, and just not finding the time and never completing something. And uh, I had a friend who I was speaking to about photos and she said that she had gone on this really fantastic trip, I think to Ireland or Europe. And um, it had been several years ago 
and she had started a scrapbook and she, you know, she said, I just haven't finished it. And I was like, well, just pick, you know, pick a finishing point, you know, maybe do like one or two more pages and then just be done because um, especially with photo projects, if we let them just go on and on, it can be a source of um, anxiety and, you know, can, we can kind of like hold that against ourselves. Like, you know, I didn't finish something. So just making it a little bit of a smaller project and finishing is better than letting it go on and on and on and on. So I also have a scrapbook from a trip I took to Brazil um, as a student ambassador where I was running into the same problem. I was like, you know, I had so much extra stuff left over and I just had to finally pick a, an end spot and just say that's good enough. <laughs> and um, it's done. So I don't have to worry about it not being finished. But uh, with photos, it just can really spiral out of control if you, if you don't pick a specific goal in the beginning. Now, step two is to collect your photos. So you're going to gather and inventory everything that you have. So this could be, you know, a simple inventory, like it's shown here, three hard drives, four iPhones, five boxes of photos, uh, or you can, you know, count them actually and get more granular, but knowing where everything is will give you a better idea of how much you have and what type of projects you're going to be able to do. Step three, sort into categories that make sense to you. So um, they could be location, date range, events, people's names. And like I said, it's good to edit as you go. So discard duplicates, um, blurry photos, uh, images that are not so great, anything that makes you feel negative about yourself um, or you know brings up negative memories of the past can be discarded based on um, Marie Kondo's famous, uh, you know, does it spark joy? So if you pick up a photo and it's of somebody you're no longer friends with, or, you know, just brings any kind of bad memories, it's good to just get rid of it. Number four, so to save the photos, like I said, first to scan them is the best, obviously, because you're going to have a digital copy, which can be easily duplicated and used in different formats. Um, you can take your digital copies and turn them into photo gifts, um, photo books, which is on step five, share. But scanning them is quite a project. So either some people like to DIY, they purchase the scanner and they do it themselves. You know, if you have a lot of extra time and a lot of photos and you wanna do it as like cheaply as possible, that's probably the best way is just to scan them yourself. Um, you can also hire a photo manager like myself to do it for you or have it done through an outside company. Um, there's many different ways to get them scanned. And like I said, um, creating a digital photo hub on your computer, it helps you get everything into the same place so that you can organize it better. And another nice thing about having the photo in a digital copy is that you can add a descriptive file name and keywords, and you can even add tags for specific people who are in, in the photos or dates. So um, with the, the digital photos that we're taking now um, on our phones, they automatically have date information and put it into them. So if you, Laurie, if you go onto your Google Photos, you notice how they're all sorted by the date that they were taken. So that's called metadata that's um, automatically created. But if we scan them, then we have to add that data after the fact. So you have to kind of do some sleuthing and some guesswork to figure out when the photo was taken. If you don't have um, you know, any information, you might look at a calendar on the wall to see what year it is, or you know, um, if it's at a specific house that you used to live in for a time period and kind of match up the year. So that's a great thing about the digital copies is that you can pull up all the same photos from the, the year, do like an album for that year, or you could um, use tags to have everybody, um, everybody's name 
attached to the photo. So you could do a search for somebody specific and create an album for their birthday or for gifts for Christmas. So that's one of the best things about having the photos digital. And also the fact that it's easy to make backup copies to the cloud or um, you know to other formats of saving them. So this week I actually started a photo project for a client and she recently took a big trip to Disneyland with her family and her grandkids. And she wanted, um, she had purchased the USB thumb drive with all their photos that were taken of them by the people at Disney. So, but she only had one copy of that. So um, my first plan of action was to at least create one backup copy. So I, I copied all the images onto a second USB in case anything were to happen to that one USB, you would not want to lose everything. And then um, I also had to kind of convert some of the movies into still images and um, separate everything into folders so that she knew which, which was, what was what. And then um, now I'm starting to work on a photo album for the trip. And also uh, I had to, she had purchased Disney frames. So I had to print photos out, put them in the frames. And I, of course I had to resize them, print them out again, cut them out again, make sure they were just right. So that part is finished and now um, it's on to the rest of the photo album fun. So having a backup copy is just very important. Um, at the, the first class I shared that um, one time I had a USB stick that was living on my keychain, you know, of documents that I needed pretty often. And I just at one point dropped it in the driveway and ran over it with my car. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to, um, you know, go over my uncle's house, who's an IT person, and ask him to please help me get these files off of this USB stick, because there was only one copy, of course, and he he did, thankfully, but, um, you know, he made, he made sure to tell me to make a backup copy next time, and then um, another time what happened to me was that I had a USB stick from a legacy box, which was a digital conversion service. And that, um, I just completely lost it. I don't know where it is, but we do have a backup on CD. However, um, I don't have any CD drives available. So we have to take it to the IT firm. <laughs> I use a new IT firm actually in Allentown now. Um, so I don't have to drive all in my uncle's house and bother him, but. <laughs> <laughs> So not having a backup really can lead to a lot of struggles and, and um, you know, heartaches if you have all your precious photos there and you lose that copy or becomes destroyed. And also the IT firm, they shared with me that if you have a USB stick and you're not plugging it in very often, it can actually stop working, um, you know, randomly in less than five years. So that's oh. another big reason to make sure you have a backup copy. And last but not least, we're going to share our photos with all of our friends and family. So there's endless options about how to share things. You can do photo books are very popular. Um, do a website where you share everything. Video slideshows, which we created uh, several of those during the pandemic for, um, for people who were not able to be with their families during important events like birthdays and weddings. We, we had family members send either a video message or a photo and some text, and we created a slideshow so that, you know, a nice little 15 minute video was able to be played for them and show them how much everybody cared, even though they couldn't be in person. Um, you can also share through marketing campaigns if you're a business. Uh, that's, you know, having all your photos for your business in one place allows you to create better ads and do more effective marketing. And you can, you know, share the collection itself too. People when they come over. <laughs> so, um, and like I said, identifying your goals, it's very important if you have a deadline, like right now we have the holidays coming up. So I have a lot of clients that want things for Christmas um, for gifts. 
So um, we can't do everything in a month or two. So um, we're having to break it up into little smaller segments in order to accomplish that goal for Christmas. Um, there is also an online community available for support. And this is through the photo managers, which is the certification program that I took. Um, and they're great. They have lots of tips available. Um, and if you have a specific question, you can always ask on the wall and people are, you know, more than willing to give out information and help and tips um, through Facebook. So uh, I feel like we kind of already talked about this, but here's some more detail about collecting, um, you know, going through the whole house, uh, getting different types of me media memorabilia, um, creating an inventory, which we have here. Um, so this is all the places that you can look for your photos where they might be stored or hidden. <laughs> and um, what to look for. So not everybody would think about looking for report cards and documents, certificates, um, but those things can be scanned and backed up as well. And the great part about that is that once you have um, the digital copy and it's backed up, you can safely get rid of the original, um, you know, report card or, um, you know, things that are, are taking a broom and clutter, like artwork. We have a, one client who their children are very prolific artists. And so um, at one point they went through and scanned, camera scanned, which just, you know, you just take a digital photo, all of the artwork and, um, you know, got rid of the physical one. But that way you can still look back at the digital copy and it's just not taking up as much physical space. We're planning a birthday party. So my best friend is sending me like six text messages. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm in the middle of something. Okay. So here's a, a template to make a phase plan. So maybe phase one would be to um, get photos together for a specific time period or specific photos of a person. Um, a lot of times people want to make, you know, memorial albums. So maybe you would just focus on photos of someone who passed that you want to create the album of um, and then get all those together, create that album and then move on to the next phase, which could be, you know, creating another album for a different family member. So when we, when it comes time to sort, you have to get supplies all together. Um, so that could be dental floss for prying apart um, photos that are stuck together, photo gloves, which are made just of fabric, you can buy them on Amazon. And those are used to protect your photos from the oils that occur naturally on your hands, um, which can cause photo, you know, they, they leave a, a fingerprint on photos, but they can also cause them to deteriorate faster. Um, other supplies might be like totes to keep things separated and stored while you're scanning them. Um, so then creating a timeline. So that would be a timeline of you know, of your life, basically. So, you know, for me, it would be obviously, you know, my childhood, my teenage years, um, my college years, uh, you know, when I first met my husband, um, when I first, we moved to our trailer. So those are different events that you can kind of um, pinpoint when you're scanning a photo and you don't know when it's from, what year, you can go back to your timeline and reference it and it helps make things a little easier. So editing the printed photos. Um, you can also, you can do a lot more editing once the photos are in a digital format because uh, like I did this when I was scanning or not scanning, but making the Disney photo frames. I had to enlarge certain photos, um, reduce others. And I also had to um, change the brightness on some 
and and lower on others because it had to look even. So some of them were very bright. And then another day it was very overcast. So we had to kind of even them out. And um, yeah, so that's some about sorting. Here's all your supplies, your garbage bag, of course. Um, nitrile gloves are great as well for, especially for um, moldy photos. Here's the timeline that you can use, you know, of the different events and your family members' birthdays and, you know, their wedding dates so that you can figure out what year things occurred in. And those are the ABCs of sorting. So A is your album quality photos. Those are the best of the best. Um, so they're your, your digitizing priority. B are photos um, that should be boxed and backed up. So they, they support the A ones. Um, they may or may not be digitized, but they should be saved in archival boxes. Um, and a lot of people don't know this, but like a typical shoe box is not really made to store photos. It's made for shoes and it's not meant to last for 20 or 30, 40 years. So many times you'll pull a shoe box out of storage and it'll be all like crusty and like falling apart. Um, but they make archival boxes that are specifically made for photos and to preserve items over a long period of time. So those are more expensive. They are an investment, but they don't contain um, acid and linganin, which are both things that can help, you know, that will deteriorate photos. If they're stored in a box that contains acid or linganin, it will um, cause them to deteriorate faster. C is for cans, so those are photos you're gonna throw away. Blurry photos, duplicates, landscapes, anything that you don't need to keep um you know that you're not going to admire for years <laughs> you can just throw away and s stands for stories so even if they're not the best photos um the ones that tell the stories you want to share and that's another great thing about doing these digital photo albums is that you kind of add text as well as photos so you can um record stories and type them and be able to um you know, give more context to people that will look at these books and albums in the future. So uh, I don't know if you've ever looked through albums in a family member's house and you're like, well, that's a nice photo, but who is that? What are they doing? You know, who, I, you know, there's no context. So if you can give um, some more details about who the person is, you know, why they're standing in front of a music store, because um, for my family, my um, I guess I have great grandparents or great uncles that owned a music store in Philadelphia. Um, so I thought that was really cool because my mother owned a music store too. So I thought it was really interesting that they had something in common, um, even though they were generations apart. And I just, um, I love stories and doing the family history documents um, where you take text and the stories um, through interviews with different family members, you create stories and write them. And then you add the photos that go with that text. So you have just a document that explains more about the people's lives. So um, there's different rules for photo management. Um, so this is just like the same as with filing. So I always tell people, you wanna file your papers the way that you'll look for them when you go to retrieve them. So if you would look for car rather than auto, you should file your, call your file car instead of auto. So the same rule applies here. Um, if you were gonna look for a photo, would you go and look for that person's box or would you rather look for a specific time frame, an event? So. Think of how you'll use the photos once they're organized and um, sort and organize them that way. Like I said, um, one cool thing about digital organizing is that you can digitize, digitize memorabilia. So those are any 2D items like letters, kids' artwork. Um, they could even be 3D objects. And um, family heirlooms, you would 
want photos of. So right now we have a big um, push, like a lot of a lot of the younger generation of millennials, it, you know, we're moving into smaller houses. Um, furniture is very, like, very cheap and widely available. But the previous generations, the ba baby boomers are all retiring and downsizing right now. And at that time, furniture used to be much more expensive. It used to be passed on to different generations. I think you would get your great grandmother's um, china cabinet, for instance. Well, right now, if you try to give a china cabinet to your, you know, great grandchild, they're going to probably say, no, no, thank you. I don't have space. You know, that's not my style. I just don't want it. Um, I can't move it. So a lot of people are just stuck with these things. But a, a nice solution would be to at least take a photograph of it, maybe take a couple and um, write down the story of how it came to you and some of the memories that you have of that furniture item. So that when you do get rid of it, you can at least still look back on all those memories and you know the photos. Um, so that's a great way to, you know, like I said, get rid of any kind of different items that you can no longer store, you don't have the room for, but you still wanna hold on to those memories and stories. Of. Like I said, we're gonna, um, most, most photo projects I learned um, while doing my certification do involve scanning. So, um, you know, if, if all the photos are already digital, obviously you're just organizing them. But um, many of the clients that come to a photo manager need to have some scanning done. So uh, I just had, last week I got my first um, really big scanning project. So a client contacted me after I sent out an email saying about the photo management services. And she has been waiting for over six years to have photos scanned and organized. And she wants to create digital albums from them. So the first step is to um, or, you know, inventory everything and scan her, her collection. But um, it's, you know, it's quite a big job for me. <laughs> so, um, so the first step is definitely to scan everything. And then once everything is scanned, we'll be able to create the albums that she wants for Christmas. Um, and also, you know, we're going to make sure that her items are all backed up with copies in three different locations. So she gave me a external hard drive as one of the, as the primary location of all the photos. It's a terabyte um, hard drive that we'll use. And then we'll use USBs. And also um, she's going to keep the physical photos and end as a, an extra backup. And uh, another uh, benefit of scanning is that you can actually um, do things like remove red eye. Um, you know, you can improve the color. Um, obviously, it's easier to share them. Um, and the three, two, one backup strategy is another cool little rule I learned. So you want to have three copies of your digital images in two different types of storage media with at least one copy stored off site. And so that could be, um, like I said, a U an external hard drive, a USB, and the physical photos. So that's actually three different types of storage media. Or it could be an external hard drive and um, two USBs. Uh, as long as there's three different copies of the images. So uh, if one, you know, like I said, if, if something happens to your USB, you lose it, or, you know, you run over with your car, You'll still have two other copies. Um, and also having one stored off site, it prevents, um, you know, it gives you a, a recourse in case a natural disaster or some type of, um, you know, flood or fire happens in your home. That way, you know, you're not losing all the precious memories. Like I read one of the stories on the, I think the photo manager's Facebook was about a woman who had lost her home um, to, I think, a fire. And she was devastated because she lost all of her wedding photos from, um, you know, her wedding, obviously. So, uh -huh. she, yeah, she had to, um, she, I guess, uh, she posted on Facebook that 
she lost all our wedding photos and she was so sad. And her cousin reached out to her and said, I do have your wedding video, you know, so at least she had something. But if she had had a proper backups, you know, she could have avoided that. At the end, to store the originals, these are examples of archival boxes and binders. Um, and they are properly labeled and inventory. And like I said, um, photos like to live where you do. So keeping them in the basement and the attic, there's a lot of fluctuations in temperature. And also it's um, prone to moisture and mold, and mildew, and all kinds of environmental um, rodents can get in there. So you wanna keep them in the main part of the house in the closet if possible. So step five is to share, um, talked about the different ways you can share through online galleries, framed photos. That's one of my favorite ways is to, um, you know, put them on the wall and create like a gallery wall. Um, but the possibilities are endless. You can put them on mugs, you can put them on blankets, you can put them on coasters, you can put them on ornaments. Um, so there's a lot of different ways to share. And there's a lot of different ideas where you can make fun photo books. Um, you can do an ABCs book, 25 reasons, uh, favorite family vacations, favorite recipes. Um, I would love to do that one day with all my food photos that I love to take. And of course your family history and legacy, which, um, so I, I did start working on a family history document for my dad's side of the family and, um, the way I came about doing that was I was actually organizing for my aunt who lives in um, my grandmother's old house who my grandmother passed away and my aunt inherited her home. So we were organizing some cabinets, you know, that hadn't been cleaned out and had all my grandmother's things that my aunt couldn't do it on her own. So while we we're doing that, we came across all these really fun photos and I um, just camera scan them at the time and just have my phone with me. So I, once I got home, I wanted to give myself more context and figure out who these people were, you know, my great grandparents. So I did a few interviews with my aunt and also my dad, um, where I recorded about how my great grandfather was a truck farmer for Campbell's Soup and um, he had five young boys, one of them, which was my grandfather and how, um, you know, kind of how life was on the farm and like the funny things that, um, you know, they would tell me about my great grandfather. And at this point, I'm a little bit stuck on it. So I actually asked my cousin, who is a copywriter to do a little editing on it for me so that we can get it printed and, and distribute it to the rest of the family. But um, it's a lot of fun doing those things, so. <laughs> <laughs> Melissa, what is the 25 Reasons photo book? Um, 25 Reasons, that could be, I'm really not sure, honestly. Like this is, uh, this is from the photo manager. So I think that there's another resource that they have on it on the website where it gives some more detail. But it could be whatever you want it to be, 25 reasons. Um, I don't know, just be creative. <laughs> That's yeah. like the whole point of the slide is just be creative. Get creative, you know, video slideshows, um, water bottles, ornaments. So yeah, um, that's all the slides here. So there's ways to get more help through uh, this lovely book. Um, photo organizing made easy by Kathy Nelson, who is the um, creator of the photo manager certification. She also does a newsletter. Uh, like I said, there's a Facebook group. And um, if people need help, they can certainly reach out to me. I'm a certified photo manager. So do you have any questions, Laurie? Any more questions? I don't. It's just such a big project. It's just one of those things where you know, maybe I need a, a weekend away from the kids to get stuff just <laughs> organized. <laughs> yeah. How old are your kids? Four and six. 
four and six. Yeah. They're a little too young to start helping you, but <laughs> <laughs> maybe once they turn like 12 and 13, they'll, they'll be able to help a little bit, but, um, yeah, it's a good project for a weekend. Um, and also maybe if you have like some friends that also want to do similar projects, it might be a good excuse to meet up and, you know, do it together so that you at least have some moral support. Um, also, if there's other family members that, you know, um, can help, you can enlist their help a little bit. But yes, organizing photos is a big project and there's a million different little facets, but the most important part is to get started. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so this has been um, Photo Organizing Made Easy. And thank you for joining us, everyone, and appreciate um, everybody that came in person to the class and also that tried to join us on Zoom. So hopefully you were able to get your questions answered and appreciate everybody's time. So thank you. And I'm going to stop our recording. Thank you, Melissa. You're welcome.